Hello and welcome to Being James Bond. Uh, this looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? Weren't we just doing this? Ooh. We're still in the uh, the, the uh, Zaritsky archives, the home of uh, the Bond experience, and we're talking about uh, our hopes and dreams for uh, 2020. Yeah, January 1st here, yep. and uh, we've got the Bollinger thawed out. <laughs> Joe, can I, can I, can I Please pour do. you a little Please bit do. more? What's New Year's Day without champagne? Exactly. We didn't get to toast last night, yeah. which was so sad. Here you go, my brother. Thank you, sir. And Joe, what are we what are we here talking about today in this part two section? Uh, well, we talked a lot about our 2019. Cheers, Cheers buddy. Uh, 2019 and uh, what what our highlights were. Uh, but now we're going to speculate on what's coming oh for 2020. Should we start pretty general? I mean, 2020 it's a big year. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, it's just as long time wise as 2019. But I hear there's a movie that's going <laughs> to gravitate us in a big way. What? What are, what are you most looking forward to in general, 2020? Uh, you mean aside from the movie, or no? That... <laughs> could be the movie too. Could be the movie. Well, I yeah. I mean, I, that is obviously uh, the big one. I mean, we've been waiting five long years for this, so it's finally here. Uh, is it going to live up to expectations? I mean, yeah. My my theory is yes. That's my feeling. My feeling is it will, and it's going to be pretty spectacular. I think. I have. A lot of confidence in the people behind this film. Yeah, the players they brought in. Uh, the, you know, the delays kind of just sort of made me feel like, you know, I, I think they know that they want a good film, good solid film for Craig to leave off on. Yes, that's kind of been my theory all along. Is that half the reason why we're even getting another Craig film is because we had great, we had okay, right? We had great, we had okay. <laughs> And okay, it might be a little generous. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's probably looking back saying like, okay, so basically my tenure will be perfectly lukewarm. Hmm. So let's let's kind of do what you don't normally see and let's go out on a high note. Right. And there was a great article by Empire Magazine that um, will have been out by the time this airs, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, Craig is actually quoted as saying, you know, um, even when Spectre ended, I felt like there was something unsaid. Like I was ready to mm. finish, but also I wasn't because I looked back and I think it was his um, kind of <laughs> marketing way of saying I wasn't happy with it either, guys. Yeah. Uh, quite frankly. Yeah. And, and I've got to agree. I think, you know, if anybody was to say, hey, what is the one thing you're most looking forward to in 2020? It has to be the movie. But to me, that's like saying, hey, David, you're going to Disney World. What are you, what are you most looking forward to see? And I might yeah. say uh, Space Mountain. But I can't ignore the fact that there's Pirates of the Caribbean and the Dumbo ride, mm. meaning, yes, there's a movie, but there's all of these things happening around the movie. Yeah. Like, I know whether it's official or not, you know, a bunch of friends of ours are going to create events. Yeah. You know, um, after all, you know, if we are lucky to go to a premiere, even if we don't go to a premiere, we're going to have lunches. We're going to have discussion points. We're going to go out to the, you know, neighborhood theaters. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to have dinners together. Like, yeah. to me, this is about literally like a month, month and a half of crazy escapades yeah. where the movie happens to be an excuse yeah, yeah. to do all these things together. Yes. I even said to my um, people at work, I said, listen, from the end of March to the beginning of April, you ain't going to see a lot of me. Just be okay with that. Don't schedule any, don't schedule any important meetings right. at all during right. that time. <laughs> right. Or don't, don't, don't do them with me. Right. That's all I'm saying. There you go. Uh, and yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. I feel like it's going to be, uh, as with everything, I feel like the fun is the people that are involved. So the fact that we are going to have, and I mean, we talked in the other video about how many Bond experiences we had that became a summit yeah. of, you know, the Bond crew, the people that you sort of have come to know. And this is going to be another extension of that. And possibly even even above and beyond uh, what we've seen already, because yeah. again, this anybody who we know from the community is all going to sort of zero in on this point, and somehow or another are going to be yes. there, and, and we'll we'll make things happen. Yeah, it's interesting. When I was thinking about from a discussion standpoint, like what am I most looking forward to, even event wise? Mm. I, I have to say, what I'm hoping for from an event standpoint is that more and more people take events upon their own shoulders. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, don't wait for an invitation from David Zaritsky or NPL or Oliver Brown or, or Eon or anything mm. like that. 
Uh, there is no mystery or magic to creating a James Bond moment. Yeah. You can invite three of your closest friends over to watch Moonraker mm -hmm. and make some, you know, Brazilian meatballs. It doesn't matter. Like, you don't need to have fanfare. I get that connection. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. You don't need to have sponsorship. I mean, Joe knows this all too well because yeah. he's known me for, like, decades. But we used to have little dinners where we would have six people over to watch a movie. One movie. Yeah. Like, they don't need to be grand or grandiose. I know that looks sexy, you know, to walk mm. away with a swag bag, but I wish that I could see more everywhere, pictures and people enjoying these little tiny moments and events. Yeah. And, and that's what I hope for 2020, that people kind of go, whoa, I don't need to wait for anybody. I can do yeah. this on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Gather All was a great example. I mean, yeah. it was a very impromptu, off-the-cuff... I shouldn't say I shouldn't say impromptu in terms of that there wasn't planning. There right. certainly was, and and it was relaxed, it, it, right? I mean, but it, but it, it, like you said, it didn't coincide with an, uh, some. No. There was no product launch. No. There was no event no. that we had to go to. We just, I mean, this was let's just get people together and have some drinks. Created, yeah. I mean, and and it was nice too. Was that I mean, people who came sort of brought their own swag. Some people yeah. brought T-shirts and stickers and bags. I yeah. mean, it was, you know, you organized, you know, a, a poker game and a, a, the... Uh, well, I, you know what I, I loved about the side effect of the Gather All is that I very lightly and gently reached out to the brands. And you, you haven't heard this story yet, but mm. I literally said to the brands, I said, hey, you know, a bunch of us are getting together. We're going to live stream some of it. It wasn't even a major advertising thing. It's like, hey, if you guys want to give anything back, I mean, we've got the whole Bond community there, yeah. you know, if you want to connect back. I was bowled over. And the Bond brands did not go, hey, David, I need like uh, 35 seconds of live stream. Nobody said anything. They're like, we don't mm -hmm. care if you live stream it, if you talk about it. There's been no follow-up to it they said and they started to send gifts because the brands get it yeah. the brands and i can't say this enough everybody's like oh you know everybody a shell i love the brands not because of what they give us but because of their passion they embrace the fans more than anybody yeah and i'm not going to pit them against anybody but there's a giant deer crossing through the yard. <laughs> um, they're the brands really embrace the um, the fans, yeah. and that was such a cool side effect. Yeah, I, I when when it was funny. I mean, we did trivia. We had like a golf. Um, yeah, you know, throwing like, of a odd putting, job hat. Throwing the odd job hat it was great. <laughs> we did a poker game, and when you started pulling out, well, first of all. Before the event, you sent me a picture of oh. you had like probably all over this floor. The bags was just lines and lines of bags, and I was like, "What is that?" And you and you, and you said all the brands sent in <laughs> stuff as prizes, and I was like, "Holy smokes!" And honestly, I was not expecting the the. I mean, I thought like, "Well, they'll send up something small, like yes. a little t little trinket here and there with the brand label on it." There was Turnbull and Asher ties. You, there was a jacket from Piz Gloria. Yes. Like, I, I mean, it was shipped here from Switzerland. The made to I measure mean, all suit of the, jacket. Oh, I mean, just, just off the hook stuff. And Sophie I was, Harley jewelry. Right? I mean, you've got to be kidding. I mean, like, and it was, and like you said, it was almost like I kind of almost forgot just how many brands that there are <laughs> until you were pulling out impressive stuff from all of them. Yeah. And I was like, so yeah, I mean that was that was that was really nice because again, like you said, there was nothing in it for them. You didn't have to say, "All right, no. I promise to to highlight your product," and the, you know, they and, just sent it. And and the other thing that people forget about is the brand owners who we've talked to a lot and actually have a relationship with. They're fans too. Mm. Like a lot of them were like, "Crap, I can't go to gather all." Yeah, right. <laughs> it's right, like, right. "Hey, invite me to your next one." And <laughs> I really, it feels like they yeah. they really mean it. Yeah. Um, what what are the things in the Bond community, looking at 2020, that you hope do not repeat? So that that was the good stuff. You hope happen more. But what what do you have? What do you hope doesn't happen? It could be anything. Um, I can't, I can't really think of anything. I mean, honestly, uh, you know, I can't really think of anything. I I I, I yeah, kind of feel like. You know, we had some sort of little headbutting about where the film should go. Right. So I feel like I we cleaned that out, though. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm saying to myself, well, I suppose there could be a chance, depending on what the movie actually does. Yeah. There'll be some debate afterwards about was this the way to go? Was that the way to go? But even still, I mean, you know, Scott and I spent all of last year doing, and we're still going, by the way, reviewing all of the films. Right. 
And again, some I love, some I don't love. Scott was the same way. Um, and it was interesting how often in the comments or whatever, uh, people, like, as an example, I did Octopussy. I, right. thought, I thought I was going to be the only guy in the world who loved this movie. <laughs> I was shocked at the outpouring of people who said, no, I Ellis, love it too. Ellis loves it. You know, I mean, yeah. big fans. Um, License to Kill was not one of my favorites, and I said, why? And I was shocked there at how many people came out and said, I love this movie. Maybe, maybe even A View to a Kill? I don't know. I, and even was A View there, to a Kill, like believe a it mini, or not. Was there a mini fun war going was on? It, <laughs> a little uh, little mini, yeah, a little yeah. back and forth, uh, throwing some jams yeah. back and forth. Super creative. But again, yeah, right. I mean, again, it just goes to show you how much fun we have yeah. debating some of these films. So again, I mean, we even the ones we say we don't like, it's it's it, like it's kind of like you're just talking about my favoritist and my almost favoritist, etc. I mean, we again we love all of them. Pizza so and the, sex. So the back and right there you go. The back and forth was always fun. Right. Um. So seriously, I mean, aside from like like the odd little weird troll here and there, I mean, I I can't think of anything that was yeah. a negative from last year. So you know, that's that's interesting because you, what a perfect dovetail into what I was going to say is. Um, if I could think of anything I don't want to repeat, uh, which wasn't even that prevalent, is the trolling, um, not even d divisiveness, because I think divisiveness is just, I have a different opinion, and mm -hmm. we just tend to go, we're divisive, and it's yeah, just yeah. a big you know, claim. But I think also some of the toxicity, I'll call it toxicity, yeah. within the Bond community, there's, there's a little bits here and there. Yeah. Some of it's born out of jealousy. Mm. Uh, some of it is born out of uh, different opinions and wanting sameness of opinions, mm -hmm. which is kind of an old, old antiquated trope that I can't believe anybody believes in anymore. Yeah. But I, I hope that's now dying down. It feels like it's dying down, yeah. which is good. I it feels so. like it's neutralizing. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to leave it in 2019 and move on. Big time. Yeah, I, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's such, it's a strange. I don't even know how to say this, but yeah, just, just like I, said, I feel like other. Other franchises probably have it much worse than we do. Star Trek and Star Wars. Star anyway. Wars. I mean, seriously, no one hates Star Wars movies like Star Wars fans. Exactly. Um, so for the most part, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm not kidding when I say 99.999 percent of the experiences that I've had on here have been nothing but positive. And again, we we can it's agree like to Ivory disagree. 99.99. There you go. So, um, you know, we don't we don't have to literally agree on every single solitary right. thing to to be agreeable. Yes. Um, but but again, you, every once in a while, like you said, you get those kind of just odd, weird little, you know, don't you have something better to do? Yeah. <laughs> then I mean, if you don't if you don't like what we do, you don't got to Watch it. Goodbye. Well, it's interesting. You you even talk about watching something because yeah. I want to I want to kind of move a little bit of the conversation to social media because you know social media is like a hockey stick it's just it's becoming <clears throat> obviously yeah. more prevalent more popular it used to be you know age focused yeah. but it, you know gosh people in their 90s and hundreds mm. are enjoying social media so one of the things I wanted to start off with talking about is I truly hope in in uh, in 2020 we get more people in the bond community engaging on social media sharing and i mean sharing yeah. in a positive way i've yeah. watched instagram youtube's been a little bit slower yeah. which is interesting because i think it's it's a little bit harder because you really i mean it's video you've got to really engage yeah. somebody instagram it's a, it's a visual but I, what i've seen in the last oh my gosh two months with instagram is these new social media bond yeah. people focusing on yeah. different corners of the world Th their content and their visuals are so creative and beautiful. Yeah. I hope that just keeps getting more. I think about some of the newcomers, yeah. like you know, even like you know Harris Thomas and you know uh, Budget Bond and and, mm -hmm. and some places like that and Commander Bond and yep. these types of things. They're so fun to engage in. I hope we get more of that. Yeah, I you know it's funny. I was I was speaking to people not that long ago about how you know I I feel like I I've, I've done a podcast now for thirteen years, going on fourteen. <laughs> Uh, and I sort of feel like, in in some respects, I've only recently felt like I'm I'm getting to become a medium sized fish in this pond. Oh, um, where I you know I feel like a lot of people now sort of know what I do and right. and I, I engage on a bigger scale with people. Yeah. Um, I'm sort of shocked how quickly some of these newcomers are coming up in the ranks. Uh, these, I know. Like you said, all these Instagram accounts, and it's great. And it, it's it is really great. Who do you like? I, uh, I, 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 so many. I, I really, I mean, honestly, I feel like I could pull my phone out right now. 
James Bond Ireland. Love him. Property of a Bond fan. Now we're James Bond Ireland, and I feel a little kinship there. Uh, so you know, again, so many different people. Like I almost hesitate to even start naming off because I don't want to forget anybody. But I, I like some of the ones that you know a lot of people don't gravitate to automatically. You know, Double O Files, uh, James Bond Complex. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and and by the way, I'm mentioning all these podcasts as opposed to YouTubers because I think a lot of the YouTubers like Dutch Bond fan and Calvin yeah. Dyson, certainly you. I think their gravitational pull is so strong. I mean, yeah. they're they're in the tens of thousands. Yes. But the podcast, it's so many different levels, but they're so entertaining. Um, yeah. And what they do, it's almost like I want to kind of share them out. You you did yeah. one. You did I, a video. I did. I mean, I, it was very easy video to put together. My right. my new favorite uh, podcast that uh, so, some of them are not even that new, just right. that I kind of found them recently. Uh, some are very new. And so, yeah, I mean, there were several of really great podcasts that came out this year, James Bond and Friends, yeah. which I'm lucky enough to, to have become a part of. Uh, and I, by the way, what I like there that happened with James Bond and Friends is mm. they took an established community and established brand. I mean, everybody knows. I think it's actually the number one mm -hmm. Bond fan site is MI6 yeah. uh, HQ. They took that and they said, guys, we've got to we've got to be a part of 2019, 2020. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got to have a podcast and they created something instead of following other people they created something really unique and it literally is James Bond mm -hmm. and friends because they have yeah. different people so I've got I've got to applaud them I think it was a very very poor move very very bad strategic move to have you on but I think they're recovering from that so. I, I, I think so too I think uh, yeah they're, they're always the worst worst uh, uh, Worst ratings is, is when I'm there. <laughs> um, and by the way, honestly, in addition to all the great podcasts that came out this year, new YouTube channels, like you said, um, one of my new favorites, the Bond Bulletin. Oh. I, I, that one sort of like hit me. Like I was like, wow, that is Benjamin really Lynn. well done. Yeah. Benjamin does a fantastic channel. Uh, honestly, you, know what, you know what he did too? He, he did something very interesting. He uh, dismantled his comments. And he said, I, I, that. I don't want it to be about comments. I want it to be about content yeah. and entertaining. And I love that he did that. And if, if you ever met um, Benjamin, and I had the, the distinct honor and pleasure of doing that, mm. he is such an authentic guy. He doesn't care. Like, I don't need 10,000 likes or 1,000, mm. you know, 100,000 followers. I just want to create content and I want to share it out. And it's well done. He's like you. He's a really good editor, too. I, I think he's put me to shame, frankly. He, oh, he really does some I very... I mean, his visuals are spectacular. I mean, I, I looked... Honestly, That I think that's sort of how... When I found his channel... Right. Um, and again, I can't remember how I found it the first time, but when I first saw it, and I was like, wow, th his graphics are amazing. Yes. So he really knows what he's doing, and his content is great. So yes. I just... Another another new, new guy, at least for me this year... Kind of blew me out of the water. I agree. I agree. Okay, so we've done events. We've gone to events. We've been privy to events. Let's play a little bit of a game. So we know that there is a little bit of a movie coming up called No Time to Die, and we're we're hoping we're hoping beyond hope that there are some wonderful things that all the James Bond fans, um, not just people on social media, but everybody can enjoy. If you were to create or think to yourself, oh man, I would love it if if Eon organized this. Mm. What would this be from an event standpoint? If Eon organized it. Yeah, so uh, let's say an official event, not David mm. Zaritsky, not, you know, not uh Martin, you know, just if they created mm. something and said we're going to create an event around the movie. What, what what's your dream state? Uh this is going to sound weird, but 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 I would, We're here it, to sound weird. As soon as you said it, it popped into my head with crystal clarity. All right. Um one of my favorite shows, it's not a show show because I think it was only like four or six episodes maybe. All right. Uh there was a show that HGTV did where the house that the Remember the Brady Bunch? Oh, I've been watching this. Yes, it's the Brady <laughs> Love Bunch. You're like, yes. They, yes. They, they bought the actual house that would yeah. just show up. And again, they never filmed in the interiors. Yeah. But they bought the house. Yes. They redid the whole interior to be exactly like what you saw in the show, down to the to the my most minute detail. Yes. I would love it if Eon did something similar with a place like maybe Palmyra. Oh, that's so cool. Bought it, renovated it, 
or the place rebuilt, in Palm Springs or something like that, maybe. Or possibly, I, you know, I, I have oh, my shit. my my mental list. Like when I when I hit the big lottery and, and become a billionaire, um, dude, it, that's effing genius. You know what I mean? Seriously, Palmyra, like. I th and, and it could be like weeks long and they could have some of the Bond fans there and and then have like this big party where everybody comes to see the finished product We got sharks That's... in the shark pool. The, this over here is exactly correct um, Maybe and then season two you let's build a fillet of soul over in New Orleans Exactly oh in the gosh. same location etc. Uh, I mean, there are things you could do. So I, Dude, I, you are producing this, I'm, right? I, it's, it, Eon, if, if you if you need, call me. I, I'm I'm good. Uh, <laughs> so that that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I kind of feel like that would be pretty wild if they did that. That's my I, dream. <laughs> okay, can I tell you something seriously? Out of out of these two parts, that is the most genius <laughs> discussion. That is so creative, you know, and unique. Oh my gosh! Well, mine's gonna pale in comparison. Uh, <laughs> So I, I just, <laughs> I was saying it would be really cool around the movie itself to have a multi-city experience that was a little bit of a pop-up. Mm. So what, what I'm what I'm trying to think in my mind is you have something in uh, London, uh, New York, you have something in Italy, you have you have like you know like seven or eight different places, and two weeks before the movie and two weeks after the movie, the premiere of the movie. Um, you have this little James Bond pop-up experience where people can literally wander in and experience Bond moments. So mm. somebody's attacking you, or and it could be things from No Time to Die. You've got to sit in the car or a replica of the car. Like It's just to, to put somebody into the mindset of James Bond, and they film it. Yeah, yeah. And they virally put it up. 007 puts it up on their Instagram. They put it up on their thing. Or, better yet, they put a 24-7 experience where literally there's a live stream happening 24-7 around this experience that people just going through this pop-up. Cool. Now, I thought I was hot as shit <laughs> thinking of this idea before this. And then you came out with redoing Palmyra. <laughs> so, screw you all. Hey, we can have both. Joe. We can do both. Whatever. <laughs> Yours is better. <laughs> all right. So, first of all, uh, you're not drinking your champagne. Oh, I, I'm, I'm drinking I'm like a, It's very good. I mean, tiny, tiny bubbles. <clears throat> it is excellent, actually. All right. So, I have to ask a question. Um, this, this could potentially be a big conversation. So, prepare yourselves. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay. Well, you know, 2020 is now ahead of us. I mean, it's January 1st. We've got the entire year. And... As we sit down, I know you spend a lot of time, as I do, in thinking about this person or these individuals that are watching us, that, mm. like this group right here, you, and Why thinking about, us? yeah, who are those people? <laughs> Why are they watching us? I don't know. And that's, that's the thing I want to answer is like, what are we doing mm. to really either raise the bar in what we're creating or, yeah. the, or the type of content or, or who we are mm. to the Bond community? So what is being James Bond going to be? in 2020 that, that oh. we want to really get excited about. Yeah, I, I think that uh, when the movie comes out, um, when the premiere finally happens, uh, that will certainly be a, um, a milestone for being James Bond. I think we're going to kind of turn a corner a little bit. Hmm. Um, with the coming of the film, the anticipation of the film, uh, I have certainly gone into full-blown uh, film critic mode. Which has been a blast, by the way. Yes. Uh, we've, uh, we've had a great... Not only have we had a magnificent time doing it, but we... I can honestly say that my like YouTube uh, subscribers is like pretty... It's skyrocketed. Yes. Sure. Um, I've, been, I've been pretty much a podcaster uh, for, for most of being James Bond. It's really only been pretty recently that you know I kind of got into. And I think you, were, you kind of inspired me to do it because you were very much into YouTube and, mm. and you really excelled with it. Um, and I figured it's time to get into the 21st century and, you know, do well, some you're video. a good personality. If you, if you have a halfway decent personality, to me, I yeah. think you should be in moving pictures. There you go. That's there just go. me. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I got a face for radio, but sorry, this is the best I can do. Oh, he's doing fine. Um, but, um, so anyway, I, like I said, it's been a wonderful experience doing the all the review stuff and all the kind of commentary about the upcoming film and everything. Um... But with that said, being James Bond was sort of founded on the idea that we want to f follow in the footsteps of James Bond, retrace some of his steps, do the things that he 
uh, is so capable of doing uh, and have some of the fun that James Bond has. You know, James Bond is all about playing golf, poker, jumping off of really high things, etc., etc. So we're definitely going to get more into that. Volume 2 will get done. Um, Wait, do you want to make a commitment on this? Uh, January I, I 1st, will, do you want to make it I, I've been saying that uh, well, if I have to finish it in a crayon and take it to Kinko's to make copies to hand out, it will get done uh, in conjunction with the film. Oh, so, uh, so it'll be yes. coming out. Yes, either, yes, right sure, around. It'd be or, great if you could bring a box of that to the premiere if you go to London. Cool, right? That would be pretty cool. Can I tell you something? I'm actually very excited, and Joe knows this. I've been talking to him a long time about some of the things that brought people to being James Bond's footstep is being James Bond. Yeah. Um, what what he's doing is something else, but this is being James Bond. That was something else, of course. <laughs> but but what what you've what you've done is um, over the last I would say couple of years actually mm. um, since you wrote the book is you've gravitated to talking about the movies and the books experiences and things like that. But I think there is such a calling for people saying to themselves, "Look, in um, a view to a kill, they ride horses. I want to know how to ride a horse. Mm -hmm. I mean, James Bond is capable. Can you teach me?" His skill sets, yeah. and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. For your birthday, you jumped out of an airplane. Sure did. That's a skill set, and you filmed it. And yep. it's like that uh, to me. I am. I tell you what, 2020. I'm actually looking forward to waking up in my morning over my coffee and mm. hitting it and seeing that being James Bond uploaded a video, and it is skydiving, or it is horse mm -hmm. thing, or it's poker, or it's. Yeah you know, how to make the best cup of coffee or yeah. whatever it is, because yep. I think that's the, at the heart of what you yeah. do. That that will be a challenge. The, the challenge will mm. be the, see, again, I, now when I was doing podcasts, it was very easy to talk about these things. Yes. Um, you have to film it now. When, when I was doing reviews, it was very easy to film these things. Yes. Now, these sort of like adventures and getting the It's camera, out in the wild. It, yeah, right. Yeah. It's it's really got to getting out there, doing things. But again, that is that is the fun. The fun is getting out and doing these things. Um, and I still think there will be a balance of some of the film commentary because again, Scott and I will have done every review um, of every film. Uh, once we are done with that, uh, one of the things we want to do is to go back and visit some of the comments that we got because we had mm. great comments. Nice. Uh, that really impressed me. There was um, very, very thoughtful insights that people posted yeah. um, about each review, and we both kind of looked at them and said, "Wow!" And that 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 was pretty insightful. So we want to kind of go back and kind of revisit. Um, it'll be quick. We'll probably do like um, like one episode will be an hour of us talking about like the first five and right. the best comments we got from each one. Um, but so yeah, there's that. And then plus we can kind of go back having pretty much spilled out our guts about every film. We could do little quick ones. You know, here's my top ten and why. Here's my bottom ten and yeah. why. And that little quick one offs. So yeah, I mean, there, they'll hopefully there'll be a nice little balance. But yes, definitely more towards because again, the film will be behind us. Yeah. And now it's back to well, what made us Bond fans in the first place? It was this this passion for wanting to live a little bit like he does. Yes. And I, so I think we're gonna do it. I think that's exciting. I and do. how about the Bond experience? What can we expect? Yeah. So I mean, I, I think it's interesting. I mean, I have to almost have to divide the year because up until the movie, and then maybe even shortly after the movie, I think it's going to be a lot of. Uh, clothing and brands. So what, one of the things that I, I, I have to applaud the brands out there is this time, different than Spectre and even Skyfall, uh, the brands are very organized and they're mm. very communicative. So the brands know the Bond experience, the, the brands know how to connect with the Bond experience. I think also the brands are enjoying the fact that I have no official affiliation with mm. Eon. So they now, I don't want to say they take advantage of that, but they know that there's a certain amount of authenticity there. Yeah. Um, do they gift things? Yes. But what I think is going to happen is leading up to that, there's going to be a lot of clothing reviews. There's going to be a lot of accessories. There's going to be a lot of products. And I want to make sure that the products, there's a lot of honesty to it. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the bad ones, you know that they're bad or I wouldn't invest in them. The, the ones that uh, are expensive, I'll say that they're expensive, but you want to invest in them. I want to create that type of truth and I want to be a little bit more focused on that. But the other thing that I want to bring is location, events, and more Bond community things. Yeah. I want to start, again, uh, you've been doing some incredible reviews mm. of a, a lot of different people, celebrities, quasi-celebrities, uh, people in the mm. Bond community. I want to keep up my Bond community discussion. I want to highlight a lot in 2020 
the individuals that are not the most popular, but the yeah. ones that I really have a lot of heart for mm -hmm. that I think should have a little bit more focus and notoriety to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I told you this, Joe, and I'll say it again to this group, is that after the movie, quite frankly, I probably would have reviewed every product and every clothing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I, I need to kind of focus on the different locations, the different, you know, living like Bond moments, mm. that different lifestyle, and then even kind of focusing on the fact that how are we bringing this Bond community closer? I, th I thought you were going to say, after all this, I'll need to take a rest. Which is another mm. part of it. <laughs> well, we need to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, so, all right. Let me, I'll start and then I'll hand this off to you. So a lot of people will say, David, do you sleep? All the Instagrams and all the videos. I mean, there are days where I have three videos coming out in one day. Mm -hmm. I have the Advent ones, I have the regular ones, and every now and then, like, I'll have a Warren one come out. Uh, which, yeah. you know, now that the concert's going on, it yeah. should be fine. But um, the reality is, is that I always tell people that I get up at 3, 3.30, I've got to occupy, occupy my time somehow. This is when I do those things. Mm. I think in 2020, what I'd like to get back to is a video a week. And it's mm. a good video, well-architect, well-produced. I don't know if everybody knows this, but what happens is I film the videos, I produce them, I do the ideation. I do what's called a very raw, quick edit of how the pieces come together. And then I literally give it to this guy to make it beautiful, to make it watchable, <laughs> uh, for want of a better term. He just <laughs> amps it up. And it's why the videos in the last six months look the way they have. Um, and everybody's been enjoying them because of that. I want to keep up with that pace, but I want to do it a little bit more methodical mm. and not have it as a bull of sauce. Because I actually think some of my videos that I've done in 2019 have been undervalued because there's been so much yeah. and, and i will say yeah. this here's my prediction as i spit on you um <laughs> my prediction in 2020 post movie is all this noise this positive noise that you'll hear in the bond community yeah. will quiet down mm. and what will be left are the bond community people that were there back in 2015 when mm. specter ended because honestly, I think this community has been holding it together. Yeah, absolutely. I hear that wholeheartedly. I, I again, stop using that word. Uh, we the, the community really has just come together in a way that I, I it's it's unprecedented. Yeah, it, it's really been incredible. And yes, that's how. I mean, we. It's almost like we needed to fill the vacuum. Yeah. And the people who were most passionate came out and they filled it. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm with that. Uh, I, I'm with you 100%. I can honestly say, similarly to what you said, I don't I, I don't think I've nearly kept up with your output. <laughs> but I, I when I don't. look at the numbers that I had this year, uh, I mean, I, way back in the day, <clears throat> there, was, there were periods of time where I would struggle to get, forget about a week, you know, right. I, I would struggle to get something out a month and sometimes even more so. There were there were some big gaps in between sometimes. This year, I think I almost I mean I, I counted it. I'm trying to remember how many episodes I literally had out this year, but it was it literally averaged just over one a week. And no, again, you, for me that was Hold on a second. You you were doing one a week, maybe YouTube, but how many podcasts did you do around that? I, I think it averaged I mean, because you figure reviews I, with remorse. Well, well, if I counted that, that would be off the hook. I mean, my, content. Well, yeah. I mean, in that respect, I probably easily had two a week. If You're I, doing if I, the reviews. I did re, my. I have a whole. I, I did a whole separate podcast this year called Reviews Without Remorse, which which we might actually be dialing back soon. Primarily because but this the is backlog gotten, so. is worth listening to. They're really yeah. fun. I mean, we have like at least 150, 160 somewhat episodes there. Yeah. Um, and seriously, with doing the interviews this year for being James Bond, which were weekly, and that started. When did that start? I forget. I, I there was there was a moment earlier in the year where I said to myself, I said I really need to because I was focusing primarily on YouTube. And again, every other week we had hmm. a review uh, in addition to whatever else was going on. Like I did the, you know, the, the gift episodes yeah. and some other things here and there, commentaries here and there. So, I mean, it was a plenty. Um, 
in addition to that, I said to myself, I said, I really want to, because I have an Instagram account and I have a podcast. And again, the podcast was starting to just sort of be audio versions right. of the videos. Right. And, and I kind of, I said, you know, I really should do more than that. So that's what I sort of started doing the weekly interviews, which has been incredible, by the way. Yes. That was sort of my response to, well, what, what can I do for just a podcast that doesn't necessarily have anything yeah. to do with video? And by the way, just for, for something to put out, I would do like the Throwback Thursdays Throwbacks. every week on Instagram. Dude, I think honestly <clears throat> you had like four or five moments a week. I, well, the throwbacks were just that. That's one a week. I did one throwback. No, no, Thursday. I understand, but I'm saying like total. If you had oh, yeah, everything yeah, up, yeah. and by the way, you're discounting something. James Bond and Friends. You've been a regular almost that, every single week. <laughs> I, I don't think this I've guy realizes. I've I don't very, think he realizes. If I and now you've got a yeah. full time job, yeah. you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> That's 2020. I, you know, I, James I will, Bond. Yeah, I will tell you. You know, Dave and I were just talking today at lunch, and I was talking about the year ahead. <laughs> and I feel like I, again, this year has gotten. I mean, the word that comes to mind is unruly, with just mm -hmm. how many things I had sort of going on simultaneously. Um, I mean, it was. I mean, honestly, and I was. I would be working full time and then go home and just spend every night editing, editing a video, editing a podcast, etc. I, I think in. I think in the year ahead, I will be much more able to structure my life a little bit more, um, particularly after the film, but even before that. Right. Um, structure things in a way that I can. I can now prioritize a little bit better, and again, get it. Get things a little more orderly. Uh, that's kind of my goal. Again, like I said, I mean, I'm doing like a gazillion different podcasts, different, you know, guest spots on this and that and other thing, which and which I'm loving, by the way. Can, can I help you yes. with something? Yes. Uh, you, you've got to you got to try this new word. Not not try it on for a size. <laughs> it's, it's it's two letters. It's a uh, no. Yeah. N O. Yeah. So you, I, I know you have hard time with it. <laughs> I do. I do. Ask my girlfriend. She'll tell you the same exact thing. Uh, but yeah, and again, it's it's um, it's because it's what's the FOMO? F O M O. Fear of missing out. out. FOMO. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, every time something is happening, you know, you you, you don't want to not be a part of it. What if so that's you, the best conversation? Yeah, what if that's the best, yeah. Something, right. So so I, all of it's been fun. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. But yeah, I, it's time to just sort of reorder and restructure. Yeah, in, uh, 2020. Because this like, is my you're, resolution. You're, for the you're getting home at night and you're going like. I, you know I'm telling you. I mean, I, there's sometimes I get home and I'm just just crashing hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't want to do that. Yeah. But we're. I think 2020 is going to be amazing. I think yeah. we're going to do. Uh, we'll do more things together. Yeah. Right. More absolutely. Co co collabs. More collabs. More absolutely. things with friends. It's been yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. And again, you know, like the lead up to the film has been spectacular, and now it's the next phase where we're going to. Okay, now the film part is over, and now we're going to start doing the things. The reason why we get excited by these films, exactly. get out and do st do some stuff. All right, man. Hey, thank you. For, thanks for having me on your show. Thanks for being on my show. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on your show, by the way. Oh, it's, it's, it's the reciprocal hour. <laughs> it is. Are we saying our goodbyes? I guess so. Yeah, it's been uh, this is this has been a pretty long. How do you say goodbye? I'm being James Bond. Uh. We say, keep on living like James Bond. Goodbye, Countess. No, hey, that's Matt Spacer. One puna fotutas. No, that's uh, Peter Brooker. <laughs> right, we will see you next time. Cheers.